at various points over the years, there have been moments of rivalry between, you know, Kiss and Swiss's sister. Interestingly, you yourself actually jammed with Gene, Paul, and Peter in the early 70s, and were actually at one point considered for the lead guitar position in Kiss. So given all that history, how do you feel about Kiss? A lot of Kiss fans think I didn't like Kiss for some stupid reason. They don't understand. I was at Kiss's very, very, very first performance in their loft when they played for their producer, Ron Johnson. This is this goes back to November of 1972. I saw them when they first kissified all their songs. I was in that loft. It was just me, this guy named Ron Johnson, and a friend of mine watching Kiss. They had just changed their name and put the banner up behind them maybe a week earlier. And they were just doing these songs as a run-through. And I thought they were amazing. And in 1976, Dee grabbed me and said, you got to come and see Kiss at NASA Coliseum. I was blown away. I mean, they established themselves as one of the great bands. And, and until they were in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I thought the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame had no legitimacy. Because I don't care what you think about them personally. You cannot deny the effect that they had on, on rock and rollers. In fact, I'll even go this far and say that three guitar players had the most impact on kids wanting to become rock stars. Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, and Ace Frehley. I don't care whether you think Ace Frehley was the greatest guitar player in the world or not. His persona created more dreams for more kids than just about any other guitar player. That's how legendary he was. So I've always given him the props for being great. I'm just going on record saying it again, in case anybody asks. Hey guys, so as mentioned earlier in the video, JJ's connection with KISS goes way back to the beginnings of that band. As a matter of fact, he spent approximately two weeks rehearsing with KISS. In a conversation with Mitch LaFon, the host of the podcast Rock Talk, JJ had the following to say. By the way, we're not talking about two consecutive weeks, like 14 days. It just means over a period of a couple of weeks I was rehearsing with KISS. So here's how it all went down. In late May of 72, I was in my apartment building in New York. I was babysitting for an attorney named Peter Thull, a very well-known music industry attorney. And I think he used to hear me play guitar out of the window because I used to play guitar in my apartment and blast it all over the neighborhood. Everybody knew that was me playing. He says to me one day in the elevator, and I was babysitting for his kid. He had a daughter, Emily, at the time that I would occasionally babysit for her as a neighbor. So he says to me, are you looking for a band? And I said, yeah, I actually am looking for a band. And then he goes, well, I'm representing an attorney named Ron Johnson who's produced a band and I'm looking for a guitar player. So they gave my number to Gene who called me and said, I understand you're a Led Zeppelin fan, etc., etc., and we're looking for a guitar player. And I said, sure. I was 19 years old at the time. So I said, yeah, and they asked, can we see you play? And ironically enough, the first week of June, I was jamming in New York with a band named Scout. And the drummer of Scout was Don Perry, who went off to be Jethro Tull's drummer. So I go and I play, and Gene and Paul show up. They're standing at the back of the church. I walk off the stage. I walk to the back. They introduce themselves. They tell me that they're changing their name, that they have a band called Wicked Lester, that the band sounds like Looking Glass, and that they're going to change it to this other thing. They asked me if I ever heard of Slade, and at that moment, I started to hear Slade, and I was still kind of in Allman Brothers' Grateful Dead mode, and they said that they were going to follow in the lines of Slade. I didn't exactly know too much about Slade, but I said, I'm down for it. So they said, come in and rehearse with us. We'd like you to come to a session with our band, but you can't tell the guys in the band that they're being replaced because they don't know. So you're coming down as a friend. We jammed a couple of times over a couple of weeks. That's all it was. It wasn't a two-week rehearsal. It was over the course of a couple of weeks. I'd go down and jam with Gene and Paul, and I believe Peter was already recruited at the time. I could be wrong, but the bottom line was that after a couple of weeks, I never heard from them. This didn't hold JJ down, however, because later that year, in late 72, JJ established Twisted Sister. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos, so if you guys like what you see, be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.